Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sowing seeds of doubt worked for the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Did God really say that the day of you that the day you eat of it you will die? You will not die. You will be like God, is what the serpent said to Eve. And it worked. They sowed, the serpent sowed seeds of doubt, and our first parents were led into sin. Now in our gospel reading for today, the devil puts the second Adam, Jesus, to a similar test in order to shake his confidence, sow seeds of doubt, and take away Jesus' certainty about who he is as the Son of God. You recall that when Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River, as he came up out of the water, he looked up and he saw heaven open. And Jesus saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him, the Bible says. And then God the Father spoke from heaven, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. How confident and certain Jesus must have felt about who he was as the Son of God in that moment at his baptism. But then the devil soon comes along to sow seeds of doubt in the heart of Jesus and to put to the test any confidence and certainty that Jesus may have. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, then prove it. Prove it to me and to yourself by turning these stones into bread. If you are the Son of God, the devil said, prove it. Prove it by throwing yourself down from the highest point of the temple and test your Father's love for you. Then the devil said to him, Bow down and worship me, and I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. As if to say, I'm not like that so-called loving father that expects you to endure the agony of the cross before glory. I'll give it all to you. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. Sowing seeds of doubt worked for the serpent in the Garden of Eden. And so he put the second Adam, Jesus, to a similar test, trying to shake his confidence. But Jesus did a very sensible thing. Jesus looked to God for guidance and direction in temptation by looking to God's holy word, the scriptures. How sensible our Savior is. He looks to God and his word for guidance, for confidence, for certainty. And with each temptation, Jesus quoted Holy Scripture, sure and certain that this was the wise path that his Heavenly Father set before him. Now, similar to Jesus, you were made a child of God at your baptism. And it's okay to let your baptism be a source of confidence and certainty for you. You are God's child. Adopted sons and daughters of God is who you are in Christ by virtue of your baptism. Because you have been baptized into Christ, God loves you. And God is well pleased with the things that you do in faith, all those kind things that you do. And God has a wonderful and eternal future planned for you, the baptized. Does the devil ever put your confidence and certainty to the test? Well, that's what he does, isn't it? The devil may say to us things like, if you are a child of God, why do you have to endure so many trials and temptations? If you are a child of God, why do you struggle so often with temptation and fail? If you are a child of God, why do doubts arise about his love for you? Why do you doubt his ability to raise you from the grave? Why do you doubt his faithfulness to you? If you are a child of God, why do you sometimes doubt his very 
existence. The devil wants to test our confidence and our certainty about who we are as the children of God. But Jesus shows us what to do when doubts arise and when the devil challenges the confidence that we have and the certainty that we have as baptized children of God. We do what Jesus did. You look outside of yourself for guidance and direction. Look outside of yourself and to God by looking at his word and the promises that he makes to his church in his word. Like Jesus said, we do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And that's what Jesus did. He put his confidence and his trust in God's holy word. And not just when the devil tempted him, he did the same when he went to the cross to pay for our sins and to win for us forgiveness and everlasting life in heaven. Confident and certain that his sacrifice would be accepted as payment for the sins of the world. Jesus went to the cross. This is how it had been foretold by the prophets who went before him, that God would accept his sacrifice as payment for the sins of the world. Jesus said no to every temptation so that he could remain the perfect, spotless, without sin, Passover lamb to offer up his life in our place as our substitute. And he was sure and certain, because this is what the scriptures said, that even though he would die and be buried, his death would only be temporary. On the third day, he would rise. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rebuild it, Jesus said. He was talking, as you know, about Easter and his resurrection from the dead. And he could talk that way. One reason he could talk that way is because so it had been foretold by the prophets who went before him. The scriptures must be fulfilled that say it should happen this way. Jesus said when he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was confident and certain that this was the path set before him by his heavenly Father who loved him and cared for him. Because, in part, this is what God taught him in his holy word. Jesus was raised on Easter just like the prophets had foretold, just like King David wrote in Psalm 16, that God did not let his Holy One see decay. And Jesus now lives forever as King of kings and Lord of lords. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. So Jesus shows us what to do when doubts arise, when the devil challenges the confidence that we have as his beloved. We do what Jesus did. That is, we look outside of ourselves for guidance and direction. Look to God by looking to his holy word. We do not live on bread alone, but in every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Look to the words and promises that come from the mouth of the Lord about the sacrament of holy baptism. Jesus said, make disciples of all nations by baptizing. That's the value of baptism. It makes you a disciple, a follower of Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 3, talking about baptism to Nicodemus, he said that being born of water and the Spirit gives entrance into the kingdom of God. That's more of the value of baptism. Peter said in Acts chapter 2, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. More blessings of baptism mentioned there by Peter, forgiveness and the gift of the Spirit. Peter wrote in one of his epistles, baptism now saves you. It saves us from death and in the grave. Paul wrote about baptism in Ephesians chapter 5. He wrote, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Baptism cleanses us from all sin. It sanctifies us. 
Paul wrote in Titus chapter 3 that God saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewal. It gives us new life, eternal life. That's the value of baptism. And he wrote in Romans chapter 6, Paul did, that baptism unites us with the death and resurrection of Christ. Because Jesus lives, we shall live also, because we are connected to him by the waters of holy baptism. It's okay to let baptism be a source of confidence and certainty about who you are in Christ. Keep trusting the Word of God and what it says about your baptism. You are the adopted sons and daughter of, daughters of God. That is who you are in Christ. God loves you. He is well pleased with the kind things that you do in faith, and he has a wonderful and eternal future planned for you his baptized sons and daughters. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting, amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, your son trampled the serpent underfoot and freed us from sin and death by his own death on the cross. Seek us when we wander from your holy word and give us contrite hearts to confess our sins and receive the forgiveness and restoration you promise us. Protect and preserve all pastors called to preach repentance and renewed devotion to holy living, especially Matthew, our synod president, Michael, our district president, and Timothy, our circuit visitor. Command your angels concerning them to guard them in all their ways and lift them up for the sake of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O King of kings, you have established earthly authorities to punish evil and to reward those who do good. Therefore, give us leaders in government who are unselfish, trustworthy, and honorable. Fill our nation with citizens whose hearts are humble and law-abiding. Make the schools of our land an aid to the church in the development of Christian character and in the development of a society that embodies all goodness and virtue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of power and might, frustrate the forces of evil in our world and destroy the weapons of those who delight in war and bloodshed. Guard our armed forces as they stand watch for us at home and abroad. Continue to raise up in this land faithful soldiers to preserve the freedoms and liberties you have blessed us with. Give courage to spirit-led military chaplains as they point those souls under their care to Christ crucified and risen for them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O Lord, bless our homes and make them dwelling places of thy spirit where Christ is honored. Strengthen us when we are tempted, lest we strike our foot against a stone and stumble. Teach families to rely upon your word as our sure defense against the evil one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, behold in mercy the abused the impoverished, the homeless, and the refugee. Supply them with all they need for this body and life. Be with the grieving, the sick, and the injured, especially those on our prayer lists and those on our hearts and minds today. Bless them with healing and comfort according to your will. Cause the Holy Spirit to bring to their mind a hymn verse and a Bible passage that nurtures faith and trust in you. Sustain us in every trial, keep us steadfast in times of distress, and deliver us in your compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we praise you for the creation of Adam and Eve and for the gift of life. Graciously watch over and strengthen all expectant mothers and their unborn children. May all those now in the womb be delivered safely and brought to the life-giving waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 